here. Shannon, how are you doing today? Hey, Claudia, I'm good. You need some coffee? Yeah, I'm keeping us awake today. Yeah. <laughs> so hey, while I got you, I got a few questions about teaching. I was wondering if you had any tips. Any tips? Uh, of course. There's so many different teaching strategies. Do explain. I sure will. Our handy dandy principal put this up for us and it's got some of the best strategies. So one of the really, really good ones is called the show me strategy. It's really simple and all you have to do is just have your kids give you evidence. So a really good way to explain this is it's sort of like classical conditioning, but not quite. So when the children finish their work, the teacher can give them a signal and then respond immediately, right. giving them an explanation to show the teacher that they really do understand what they learned. This way you can start helping other kids and at the same time, you can communicate across the classroom with your kids. That way you really do know that they are learning. Nice. It's got a lot of evidence to it. Um, and it just, it really gives them a chance to commit the information to their brain because they're repeating it to you. So it's really, really great with long-term memory because that's more le meaningful learning. And it can be stored longer in the human brain and retrieved at any point as long as they can remember it, which they will because they're actually learning. So a really good example is, hmm, let's say, let me think about this. A sixth grade class that's learning about math. You teach math, don't you? I do. I sure thought so. If you're up and you're having a really hard math problem, ask the kids to solve the problem and show you each step. Write it down however they have to. Just make sure you can see each step to the problem. Not only is this going to help them solidify and commit to long-term memory the steps, but it's giving us as teachers proof that our student is or is not getting the material that is being taught. This is also, also actually really good for the exit strategy, which coincidentally is our second strategy. The principal loves this one. So the exit strategy is really straightforward, and it's when the teacher gives each student an exit ticket or a really quick assessment that they have to answer before they're allowed to leave the classroom. Some tips that we were giving on creating an effective ticket included the following, and it was keeping it short and simple, creating to focus on the objective that you're learning, and they make really good do nows. So what I mean by short and effective is you really don't want to make it longer than three questions, because then your kids are just like, all right, Miss Claudia, I'm going to get out of here. It's time for lunch. <laughs> so you got to make sure it's really short, and if it's on the objective that you're learning that day, you'll know that your kids should know this, and if they don't, you know that you need to go and reevaluate their plan. It really works well with classroom management because it lets the teacher keep control of the classroom in a way that they can use to teach the children and keep them all from leaving the classroom at once. I know when that bell rings for lunch, those kids swarm out of there. Exit tickets is how I keep them from going crazy. <laughs> so, one really good example is if I'm a history teacher, so if I were reviewing countries in Africa with my geography class, um, I would have them do an exit ticket and name three countries that we learned about today on Africa. Um, each child would have to turn it in on the way out the door, and then I would check them before the next day. So when we come in the day after, I can be like, all right, here are your exit tickets, and then go over the questions with them, because that really is what helps to make sure they learn. That's why it's really, really connected to the show me because it does let them know it, you can show yourself what your kids are and are not learning. So it's a really, really simple thing. It takes just a couple minutes and it's really not even that much grading. And then we have the strategy number three, what to do. I know the teacher down the hall, I think she teaches science. Yeah, she loves the what to do. So the what to do is really cut and dry and the teacher reevaluates how they give instructions to their students. So many times the teachers take time to tell their students what they don't want them to do. You know, I'm, I'm, I do this too. Sometimes you just get frustrated. Say, like, don't write your paper in APA format. But really all this is telling your students is what you don't want. And so then they have to sit there and they're wondering, well, gee, what does Miss Claudia actually want? I just spilled some of my coffee. Get some more. There we go. They're like, I don't know what this teacher wants. I just know what she doesn't want me to do. So, when you're doing the what to do strategy, you're just rethinking how you're talking to your kids. It's almost like you're speaking out a rubric to them on the paper. So, instead of saying, I don't want you to write an APA paper, you could say, you're going to write a paper, and I, well, you don't ever tell them they want to write a paper, because let's be honest, 
No they don't want to write the papers. But one of the really good ways is you can say, okay, class, I want you all to write a paper. I'm not putting a page limit on it, as I want you to write as much as you feel is necessary to get your point across. I want proper grammar, and I want you to write on the character development in Beowulf. So I know the English teacher actually used one of these examples just the other day. But it just lets them know the main, the main plot points of what you want your kids to get across. Okay, and okay. so doing that, it's a, lot, it's a lot easier for them to actually understand and be like, oh, I know what Miss Claudia wants. This lets them focus on writing the best paper possible instead of trying not to fail. But in my favorite, well, of course not. We always want all of our kids to succeed. So the last strategy, we should all already know this, but some people don't. Strategy number four is joy. And the joy isn't, to me, it's not really a strategy, but a way of life and a sort of code that, I, code that I think all of us as teachers should live by. The basis of the strategy is that we should always find ways to get our students to celebrate learning. It's both the easiest and most difficult task for us as teachers. When I say celebrate learning, I mean integrate certain facets that are enjoyable. It's not always going to be the most fun. I get that. They understand. But... You can inter in integrate stuff that they find fun and interesting. This is probably because the expectancy versus value motiv motivational theory. Kids are more likely to learn and want to learn if they're actually interested and motivated by what we're doing. So, for example, younger students will, might respond better if their normal lecture was replaced with a song that delivers the same material. And it's going to help them with their long-term memory because they can attack the song or they can attach the song in their brains to the information. So anytime they need to pull it out for a test or something, they can pull out the song and start singing and they'll remember it. Now, if, if you were in like a ninth grade history classroom, instead of doing the same lecture that we always do on medieval times, they can do Jeopardy instead. A lot of times this gets the kids all riled up and sometimes there is a prize at the end of class. You gotta be careful. Sometimes they get really worked up over it. <laughs> But if you separate them and you just let them go at it and answer the questions, as long as they know to take it seriously, they have so much fun and it really warms my heart to see them. But it's just a lot, it's a lot easier for kids to learn when they're actually having fun. So, strategy number four, always live by it. All right, well, Mr. I Chandler, really I bet you have. Thank you very much. Have a good day.